Hey everybody, how's it going? Good. Try it again. How's it going? <laughs> um, last talk was good. All right. My mine will be almost as good. Um, I'm Ian Douglas. I'm a senior developer advocate at Postman. Uh, thanks for having me. How many people here are wondering like why is Postman here at GRPC Conf? No hands raised. All right. Well. Then I answered all your questions out the table is great. Um, I've actually been doing quite a bit in gRPC this year and, and really enjoying it. How many people here are currently using Postman in some capacity? All right, uh, first three people up here to grab uh, a swag pack. Uh, I've got socks on a couple of the chairs here. Come grab socks and a, and a notepad if you want. Uh, there are extra drink tickets in some of those socks. So if you use Postman, uh, come, grab, <laughs> come grab a... Well, grab, grab the grab the notepad too, because that's got the drink ticket in it. Uh, so yeah, just grab the socks. No, just the socks. Just the socks. Just this sock pack. All right, last one. One left. One left. Run, run. There we go. Um, cool. Like I mentioned, um, Postman uh, Postman's grateful to be here. Thanks for having us as uh, as a sponsor. Um, we actually introduced GRPC in Postman. How many people here didn't know that Postman did GRPC? Before today, okay, a couple of folks. So this this talk is for you. Um, so we we introduced it in January of 2022, and we've made some updates and changes to the UI. And so my demo today, I'm going to kind of demo how to go through and actually set up gRPC in Postman. Just do a simple test with uh, a template, and then show you how to do a little bit of JavaScript testing in here as well. Um, we got some other swag and stuff to give away uh, that we'll uh, we'll kind of go through. We are going to raffle off this cool little bobblehead. Uh, at some point, so you will need to come by the, the table. If I've already scanned your badge, the scanning thing didn't work, so we need to uh, take a picture of your badge, and we're going to randomly draw one of those badges uh, to get our bobblehead. Otherwise, we got some uh, some other swag here to give away as well. Um, all right, so quick agenda. I'm going to show you kind of the growth. Uh, we publish a report every year called the State of the API Report. And uh, I want to show a little bit about the growth that we've seen in gRPC over the last couple of years. We've been doing this uh, uh, API survey since 2018. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see some of the uh, some of the growth there around different technologies and so on. Did anybody fill out that API survey this year? There were about 40,000 people that filled it out. Anybody in the room fill that out? Anybody want to lie to me and tell me that you filled it out? <laughs> All right. Come grab, uh, come grab our, our water bottle and uh, bottle and our uh, hat up here. <laughs> um, all right. Well, the reason that you're hanging out with me, besides my uh, my dad jokes that I love putting on my slides, uh, we're going to show how to design a gRPC API. We're not actually going to like program the API, but we are going to show some of the capabilities of Postman. Um, and you'll be able to do this in both the web interface of Postman as well as the desktop version. And you'll be able to do this as part of the free account as well. So you won't need any specific account access to get into building and planning out your gRPC API in Postman. Uh, I'll try to save a little bit of time at the end for some q and I'm going to have some QR codes on the slides uh, towards the end with extra resources and so on. Uh, we're actually doing a webinar next Wednesday for free that you can register for. I'll have that code up here on the, on the screen at the end. Uh, and we're basically going to walk everybody through a little bit of the history of gRPC, but also how to design even deeper work around the proto files and how to do some advanced testing in gRPC APIs as well next week. So with the state of the API report, uh, like I said, we started doing this in 2018. And for 2018, 2019, we kind of lumped everything together as just microservices. And we were asking people who were filling out the survey, like, what are you excited about in technologies? And, you know, five, six years ago, it was like, oh, we're interested in things like microservices. In 2020, we actually split it out into different kinds of technologies. So now we can split out, you know, are you are you actively doing gRPC or are you doing REST? And of course, REST is, you know, by far the most popular API architecture that we see. But we have seen a little tiny bit of growth in gRPC over the years. Um, it started out fairly small, uh, only a few percent, 7% or so in 2020 used gRPC. And over the last two years, um, we haven't seen very much growth as far as like how many people are actively using gRPC. It's staying around that 10, 11%, which is still great. We're still seeing a fair amount of growth. 
since we started kind of putting the survey out there, a lot of people are interested in what this technology is. So by all means, keep talking to your coworkers, talk to your companies about uh, what it is you want to go build. And uh, we'd love to see we'd love to see more people using gRPC for sure. Um, so we started breaking down those technologies uh, in these surveys, and we do this every year. And uh, last year we had about 35, 36,000 people, I think, do the survey. This year we had about 40,000 people fill out the survey. We'd love that to be bigger. So if you happen to see an email from Postman, if you use Postman and we send you an email, last year, for example, we gave out a, a PS5 uh, and, and some gift cards and so on. So it, it can be worth your while to fill out that survey, get in some raffles and, and things like that. Um, but all right, demo time. I'm going to unmirror my screen here. Uh, and I'm going to show you in Postman kind of uh, while we go through this. So bear with me for a sec while I switch my screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through uh, some templating that we do in Postman. And I'll zoom in on this. Uh, let me know if that zoom level is okay. Happy to zoom in a little bit more if, uh, if folks need. Um, but I'm going to walk you through what, what do we need to do to kind of build out a gRPC API inside of Postman. So I'm uh, just to kind of get started, I am logged in. I am in a workspace. You will need to be in a workspace to follow along with this. Uh, once you have a workspace, uh, what we're going to do is we can start at a collection level or we can start at an API level. If you don't see some of these icons here, we actually made a change earlier in our uh, earlier this year in our UI. You can click this very bottom icon and you can kind of customize what you want to have show up. Um, and so just make sure that API builder is uh, is enabled and then you'll have access to that so i'm going to start in an api layer uh, in our api builder and kind of show you what we have uh, capability of so the first thing i'm going to do is click on create an api and we're going to give it a name uh, i'm i'm a big fan of like really awful dad jokes as we call them uh, does anybody know a good storage mechanism for dad jokes where do you keep dad jokes keep them in a database uh, so we're going to call this our database API. And what we can do here is uh, if you scroll down in this interface, you can see some of the integrations we do. You can actually bring in proto files from uh, other revision control repositories and so on. Uh, I'm going to use this link at the very bottom here that says I'm going to continue without a repository. From here, we've got the name of the API. You can come in. You can start adding some documentation in here if you'd like. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this over here on the left panel. And again, it's asking us, do we want to import something or do you want to create a new definition file? We're going to go ahead and create a new one. And then we've got a drop down here that asks us what type of API sort of schema do we plan to use? And you can see here that we've got protobuf 2 and 3. Um, it's been in beta for the year and a half that we've been released. I don't know if we're trying to pull a Google and just call something beta forever, but uh, we're going to choose protobuf 3 for our version. And then the definition format, because we're protobuf, the definition format is only proto, so we don't allow you to change it from there. There is a checkbox here to use a boilerplate, and this is just some template code that we're going to use today just for the sake of time. If you leave that empty, it'll basically start you from nothing, and you can literally type in your own whole proto file if you want. Uh, you can copy and paste over proto files. Or like I said, you can import things from other repositories. You'll have that ability to just bring your proto files in here. And I'll show you some of the structure that we can do with this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create that definition. We can see it made us something that's kind of library themed. We're going to change this to be about our jokes. So I'm just going to change our package name here. And I'm going to change some of our messages here. I'm going to call this a joke message. And uh, we'll just call this ID. And then we'll do a joke and then maybe like a topic in here. So. Um, and so we'll do like get joke request and we'll do this by ID and we'll say get joke by topic. And this will be by our topic. And then these are basically the endpoints that we kind of give you in this template automatically where you can say, I want to go get a single thing by that ID. So we call this joke service and get joke request. Oops. And that's going to return a joke. Just for the simplicity, I'm going to take some of these things out. But basically, we build an endpoint here for each of the four types of calls that you can do in gRPC. We have the unary type at the top, which is kind of our, you know, the gRPC version of a RESTful single transaction, you know, send a request, get a response, and hang up. Uh, but then we also support the streaming uh, types in both directions, where the client sends over one thing and gets a stream back, 
or the client sends a stream and gets one thing back or bidirectional streaming. So we support all of those in gRPC inside of Postman natively. So just for the for the sake of brevity for today, uh, I'm just gonna make this uh, two of them. So get joke by topic. And that's gonna return a joke as well. And then I'm just gonna take these other ones out just for the sake of brevity and lack of confusion. So this is how we would work with a single proto file. If, if your company has like several proto files and you're importing and so on, we also allow for that mechanism as well. So over here, when we look at our definition, if you highlight over the definition, you'll see these three dots come up on the interface. And from here, you can add folder structures and you can also add other files. And so I'm gonna add a new file in here and I'm just gonna call this messages.proto. Because what I wanna do is I wanna organize my work a little bit where I wanna take all these message types and I wanna put those in a separate file by itself. So I'm just gonna take all of those message payloads out of here. And I'm gonna put those inside messages proto. Now we still have to define the package name and the syntax per regular protobuf sort of spec. And we're gonna go through, make sure you save your work as well. If you see this dot in the tab like this, it means you have to save your work. There's a save button. If you're on, uh, on a Mac, you can use command S. PC and Linux, you can use control S. To automatically save those. Now what we can do in our main file here, you see this one is flagged as root. That's basically telling our gRPC system uh, that this is sort of where you want to get things started is from here now we can say I want to import my messages.proto file and now these are just going to automatically link and so if you have multiple files and folder structures for example if you wanted to put these in a folder then you can just do pathing in here just typical protobuf uh, sort of setup here so we're going to save this as is and one of the things that we do if, if you've used Postman for RESTful APIs or GraphQL APIs, uh, if you want to ever make a mock server, you have to go in and manually build out a collection and manually start a mock server, and you have to do these saved examples. Just by having a proto file on here, we just spun up a mock server for you. So mocking is automatic with gRPC in Postman. So we don't have to do that ourselves. We do have to go build the collection, but there is a mock server already built out based on everything you put in here. As soon as you make any changes, that synchronizes to the Postman cloud and will automatically update that mock server for you. So let's go take a look at how to build that collection. The workflow here is a little bit different. If you're familiar with using Postman and building out collections of requests and so on, this workflow is gonna be a little bit different. With RESTful APIs, you would start by making a new collection. There's a plus sign up here to make a collection. There's a link down here at the bottom of this panel if I were zoomed out a little bit more to create a collection. Um, but to use gRPC, we actually have to use this new button at the top of the UI. So we have to click on this new button here. And then from there, we can choose all of the different technologies and also which part of the UI we wanna be in. So from here, I'm just gonna select gRPC. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna start at a request level, which we can then save into a collection. But to start out with, we're gonna just build out a request. Now we don't have a URL because we're still in design stage. We haven't actually built anything. So we don't have a URL, but in order to pick one of the methods that we make, as soon as we click in this dropdown, it'll say, oh, by the way, we notice you've got an API called our database API. So you can automatically pick that. And then through that introspection, there's your methods. It's ready to go. And it'll show you with the icons here, this is our unary transaction, single upload, single download. And this is our stream where we're sending a single thing and we're getting multiple things back uh, from the server. And so it shows you with some iconography here what the uh, different types are. So we're gonna do the get joke by ID. If, we, uh, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll actually see all the different things across here, like our scripting, as well as our metadata, which is kind of the gRPC version of like query parameters where if we really wanted to pass a message ID of some kind, we could do it in here. But we've already got that as part of our prototype, or sorry, our protobuf uh, set up here. So what we can do instead is we can use this button here, that down at the bottom of the interface that you see right now, it says use an example message. What this is gonna do again is it's gonna introspect your proto file and say, oh, you had a message type for this already. So let me go generate that for you. It was an int, 32 or an int 64. So it's just gonna randomly put a number in here. And so we'll say, let's go get joke one, two, three, four. Now to invoke this, this is actually gonna go connect to a server, but we haven't built anything yet. So invoking this doesn't do anything. We see a big exclamation point show up here 
where we have to enter the URL. But again, like I said, we automatically do mocking for you. And so we can just immediately pick this option that says use the mock URL and it inserts that for us and we're ready to go. We hit invoke. And if I pull up this part of the interface, uh, let's click on this. Nope. Oh, our metadata key contains a little, okay. So I gotta delete this meta key and we'll call that. So now when we come back here and we show what happened, we can see that our status code came back as zero okay. And it actually gave us a, a fake response that comes back here. Now I don't speak Latin, um, but our, our server I'm sure came up with a really funny Latin dad joke. Um, I only know one dad joke in Latin. Uh, how do you how do you tell someone in Latin to seize the day privately? Send them a carpe diem. Um, sorry, I know my 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 jokes my jokes are bad. Um, but our mock server is basically going to introspect the data types that you're using, and it's going to do its best to try to figure out you know based on the data type. Now, if you're doing really advanced protobufs where you're defining your own data types we might struggle a little bit on how to use those custom data types, um, but our team's happy to talk to you about what it is you're building. We're gonna do our best to try to reflect on what it is you're, you're building and, uh, and the mock server will try to keep up from here. The nice thing about this now is we've, we've got this all built out. We know we can call this, we get a response back, we get our status code, we see how long it took to call our mock server, uh, is we can go ahead and save this. And at this point, this is where it's going to say, okay, do you want to save this in a collection? So we're going to call this collection, we'll call it our database API, and we'll go ahead and create that collection, save our work. And now over here at this point, now we can click on the three dots over here and we can continue to add other requests. We can also change what this was. So this was get joke by ID. And we're all set to go. Now, the other thing that we can do from here is we've got our mock URL in here as our server is we can actually use our variable types and this just uses handlebar syntax if you're familiar with handlebars. Um, and now we can go build an environment for our mock server, for example. So I'm gonna create an environment and I'm gonna call this mock and I'm gonna call a variable URL. I'm gonna put in the initial value, which I thought I'd copied, but apparently I had not. Let me go grab that again. Over here. Okay, so copy that. And I'm just gonna put that in my environment variable over here. And go back to my collection, go back to my request. And now I can just put my handlebar variable in here and make sure that at the very top right corner under environments, I choose my mock environment. And if I go through and save all my work, if you can discern the difference, this went from a red color to kind of an orange color. And if I hover over it, it'll show me what that mock URL is gonna be. The power of this is now you can make an environment for your development mode, your mock server mode, if you have staging, production. And the only thing that you need to change uh, for calling that RPC call is just changing this, uh, which environment you're picking from that top right corner. So you can very quickly toggle between dev mode mock mode uh, for writing your tests as well as your staging and your production mode. So let's take a really quick look at how to do testing. Does anybody here currently do JavaScript testing in Postman of any kind? A couple of hands. I saw your hand first. So we got a book up here called API First World. It's a little graphic novel that we wrote as well as a, uh, a ball cap. You're welcome to come grab that. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, and so what we changed also a little bit differently about the interface here for gRPC, um, if you're familiar with REST APIs and so on, we normally have this tab that I've got my mouse cursor on right now. We normally have it called tests. And then we've got another one for pre-request scripts. Uh, we've changed the nomenclature here now. It's just called scripts. And you see we have a different tab interface for before invoke and after response. Me personally, I like this wording a lot better. It makes it a little more clear as to how we're, uh, how we're writing uh, or when this code is actually gonna execute. So I'm just gonna collapse this over here on the left side for a moment. And what I wanna showcase here is we've got all the snippets over here. Um, if you're not familiar with Postman and our test interface, we have a bunch of test code uh, that will actually write for you. So for example, I wanna test that my status code came back as a zero, that my response time was less than 200 milliseconds. In this case, maybe I'll make that two full seconds. Um, for hitting the mock server, but maybe in dev mode or in production mode, you wanna make sure you've got uh, certain speeds. 
You can also test that certain metadata uh, will exist or that, uh, for example, your message has a specific property. So you can come in here and say, I expect that message to come back to have a certain key with a certain value. Now, if you're hitting the mock server, you're not necessarily going to know that the joke that comes back was, you know, uh, like my favorite joke that says um, they ran out of flatbread that didn't want me posting on social media. So they made me sign a non-disclosure <laughs> agreement. Right. And so you can you can write a test like this, but this test is not going to pass um, because if I'm hitting the mock server up here, when I hit that invoke, we'll actually see that this test should fail for us. Uh, we see down here test results one of three down at the very bottom of the interface. Uh, one of these oh one of these canceled because it's in the wrong spot. I'll just clear some of these out for a moment. We see zero of one test. So we can see we expected it to include this joke thing and that didn't work out. You can always look at the response. Oop, call canceled. That's not what we wanted at all. Um, all right, let's just change this back to the mock for a moment. Just to make sure that's not the problem. All right, so we can still see that the test failed uh, because that didn't work out. But if we look at the response, we'll actually do uh, the JSON deserialization uh, for you here, just so you can see more human readably uh, what that response is. We also have our console here uh, that will show in the case of an error, we'll show a little bit more data in the console here as well. So we've got all that script uh, ready to go that you can uh, that you can write for both the before invoke as well as the after response. The before invoke would be something like if you have to set something up ahead of time, like do some authorization uh, in order to call this. The main difference here is if you're doing streaming, the after response test will not run until the streaming ends. So for example, if we were to call this other endpoint where we're expecting a stream to come back from the server, uh, when we invoke this one, uh, this one actually ends right away. But if we were doing client streaming, um, it actually holds that connection open until you manually close it. There's a button to say close the connection afterwards. And only once that connection is actually closed does it run sort of the after response script. So that's the other main difference here. It's, it's unlike the typical HTTP REST API where as soon as that transaction's over, it disconnects. Because of the streaming nature, we'll hold that connection open until you manually disconnect, and at that point, we'll run that code. So we've got feature requests from, from users that actually do gRPC in Postman asking things like, hey, can we run these tests while these streamed packets are coming in? Uh, so the team is currently evaluating feedback from users. So if you currently use Postman and you currently want to do gRPC in Postman, we'd love to hear feedback from you as far as what kinds of options you'd like to see. What do you like about the interface? What don't you like about the interface? We'd love to get feedback from folks on that. Um, I'm going to hang out at the table out here for a little while. Again, if you want to come by and uh, scan your badge to win our little bobblehead, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, I think we got a couple of minutes left for a question. Uh, but I've got one question for all of you. Uh, who here has been using Postman the longest? So who here has been using Postman for more than a year, more than two years, more than three years, five years, seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years? All right. Well, I've only got one swag pack left. Uh, and I've got two hands raised, so that's tricky. Um, number, true, but Postman's only been around for about a decade. So if I said, who's been using Postman for 12 years and they kept their hand up, I know you're a liar. But uh, yeah, then we give it to the other person. That's right. Um, so let's do this. We'll just split the, uh, the swipe pack. So there's a mug and there's a ball cap and there's some socks and some stickers and so on. So you all can figure out how to coordinate to, uh, to share that. So thank you for uh, playing along. Again, we'll scan this. I do have time for a couple of questions if you wanna ask real quick. I know that was like super fast paced demo, uh, but if you've got questions about gRPC and Postman, I'll do my best to answer that for you and then uh, we'll wrap up. Can you do oh, can you, can you run gRPC in the terminal? Yeah. So we currently have two command line tools. One is Newman, one is the Postman CLI. Um, I believe that all you need is the collection ID from here. So if we click on this and we go over to the uh, information panel, you have a collection ID. 
Uh, I believe that you can run this with a collection ID. I do need to confirm that you can run the gRPC with this, but you should be able to. All you should need is that collection ID, and we'll do our best to try to connect to that. Again, if you need a different environment, there are command line options that you can say, use this environment, use that environment, uh, if you are using the variables for things like the servers. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to confirm that for you and, and let you know. Yeah, question here? Yeah, thank you for the socks. Yeah. Um, a question about streaming. Mm -hmm. um, I've been using uh, Postman, but I found the issue that uh, I don't get the messages until I close the stream. So for long pool streaming, is there an other workaround to get the message? Um, so when you're doing long-term streaming, you don't get the terminator at the end? Yeah. No, I don't get any message until I close the stream. You don't get any messages until you close the stream. Um, I haven't seen that myself. I'd love to see, like, I'd love to see some steps to replicate that. I'd be happy to help you through that. Um, if you if you can show me out of the table, I'd I'd be happy to help you take a look at that. I haven't seen that myself, um, but I'm I'm also not, you know, super expert on uh, on this. But um, but yeah, I'd love to I'd love to take a look at that and see if I can replicate that for you, and then I can take that back to the team. Yeah, thanks. All right, well, let's quickly go back to the slides because we do have, actually, while well, he's running with the microphone, let me go back to the slides here real quick. And then I've got uh, some extra resources that I wanted to share. Yeah, question. Yeah. On the slide here. Um, so these are two QR codes. If you want to grab pictures of this, the QR code on the left side is for a webinar that we're doing next Wednesday. Again, we're going to go through a little bit of history on GraphQL, or sorry, on uh, gRPC. Uh, and how to set that up in Postman and do some testing. The second one here is uh, Postman Academy. It's a training program that we put together. And again, it'll walk you through some history of gRPC, but it'll take you through um, uh, some, some questions there on how to get started with gRPC. So if you just want to grab a photo of that, um, I'll leave that up here for just a minute. And aside from that, yeah, if there's any other questions. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to show like, the streaming demo, the get jokes by topic, if you have time? like. Uh... Um, we don't because uh, the next person is going to be up here in about two minutes, but I'd be happy to demo it for you out here at the table after. Yeah. I just wanted to add an official GRPC business. We are huge fans of bad jokes. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Well, I'm, I'm hoping for the uh, for the webinar that we have next week that I'll actually have my dad joke API actually written for GRPC and we'll be testing against that. So. Um, thanks. This is my contact info. If you want to stay in touch with me, I'm Ian Douglas 736 on most social platforms. Uh, I'm always a big fan of dad jokes. So if you have a favorite joke, by all means, connect with me on social and, uh, and share your, your dad jokes with me. And uh, I'll wrap up. Thanks, everyone.